What a week it's been for news. COVID cases are up. And it was also a big week for our delegate, Congressman Michael San Nicolas, who is now under an ethics probe. Let's get right into it. Off a day, I'm Adriana Cotero, and this is Trend Spotting. Guam is casting a wide net mass testing in villages for the contagious COVID-19. But this week, almost all newly confirmed virus cases were coming from behind the gate. By Friday, the Department of Defense reported 15 positive cases from a unit deployed to the Anderson Air Force Base. Those members were staying at the Reef Hotel in Tuman and taken back on base after they tested positive. Here's what you thought about this pressing issue. Maria Pareto says that's because Lulu wants to open up the island. Just be careful and take all precautionary people. Of Guam. Bobby says they need to test arriving passengers. Opening up the airport is bound to happen, but we need to be proactive in keeping Guam numbers low and us safe. Another comment says if everyone follows CNN or the news in the States, USA leads the world in top COVID-19 cases in the world, and we are still letting them roll through the airport like nothing is really going on. Just stay safe, Guahan. Hope those service members get treatment and quarantine themselves. And on our Instagram, Sean writes, Please increase the recoveries, Lord. Frontliners, thank you for staying up late night to find medicines to the COVID-19. Turning our attention to Guam Delegate Michael San Nicolas, we learned last week a congressional probe has been launched into allegations that range from an affair with a staffer to campaign finance violations. While San Nicolas brushed it off as a merely, quote, a part of the process, unquote, local leaders are much more concerned, including former Guam Delegate Robert Underwood, who said, quote, this is not just part of the process. Process. He is representing us. He is Guam in Washington, D.C. He needs to come home and he needs to explain to the people of Guam what he did. What is he being accused of? Unquote. Even our closest congressional neighbor, CNMI delegate Gregorio Kalili Sablan, weighed in saying he needs to answer this and only he can answer this. The ongoing saga stems from a complaint made to the House Ethics Committee last year by former San Nicolas staffer J.P. Manuel. And the comments keep on coming. Joseph Cruz says Congressman Michael San Nicolas was elected by the people of Guam to represent our island in Congress, and he has done an amazing job doing so, making things happen in Congress to get the much help needed from the people of Guam during this hard pandemic time that we, the people of Guam, are experiencing. One of our top fans, Cheryl Jensen, said, How has he represented Guam? He has the worst voting record ever. Even if he is cleared of these allegations, the fact that his integrity has been called into question is an embarrassment to the people of Guam who elected him. And it was a hard week for the island's homeless who took up shelter at Paseo and Hagania. On Thursday, they were told to pack up and get out with nowhere to go, which was extended to Friday. Parks and Rec's head, John Birch, called into containing COVID and said they're clearing out prime parks in anticipation of reopening tourism. The boot comes after Operation Safe Haven at Paseo were scrapped. Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio earlier this week said plans for a concrete structure have been amended four times. Active procurement is underway, and he hopes to have a better answer by Monday. And this is what you had to say. One of our top fans writes, why not use the old empty police station in Aganya? What is the progress of the homeless shelter project under the lieutenant governor? Where is the federal money's allocation for homeless shelters? This is unbelievable. Bill Cundiff says this situation has been going on for decades without any real solution in sight. Regardless of who is to blame, our government must help our poor and homeless brothers, sisters and their children. Nip it now before it really becomes a grave situation. Bernie Tova says, move yourself, Lou and Josh. These people are human beings. How can you sleep at night knowing this is what you signed up for? Stop with the delays. Help our people. Let's round this all off with a powerful poem that's caught the island's attention, just as the fight against racism has gone global. University of Guam alum Jojo Area wrote Chuki Confessions No. 1 after she saw a racist comment against Chuki's people inside a bathroom at school. She was born and raised in Chuk and came to Guam for college in 2012, and she struggled with hiding her Chuki's identity to blend into the Western culture. Although she's in Iowa, Area shared her poem and story with Victorious Fallon on our One Micronesia podcast. Here's a taste. Is it possible for a Micronesian to be something more than her snap card, her Section 8 housing, or her colorfully embroidered mumus and zuki? What do we say to our children? Do we teach them that there is a great big world full of diverse peoples and cultures? Or do we urge them to hide their zuki, themselves, and their heritage? Do we teach them to fear the repercussions of being unabashedly Micronesian? 
Before we head into another week, I strongly urge you all to check out our One Micronesia podcast that includes the full poem and interview streaming live now on all our social media platforms. I'm Adriana Catero. Adios.